another episode of talk is cheap with kiana j i am your host kiana j this is our second episode into the fourth season clap where's my clap hold on it ain't working you pushed it too fast <laughs> 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 i am my host is back. Um, she didn't make it last week because of the bad storm we had. I it's am a- scared of the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how old I am. I don't care. <laughs> but I am the one and only Therese Marie. <laughs> no, it's the story behind it. So don't tell me to grow up. <laughs> okay. And they missed each other. They haven't seen each other in a while. So they're going to argue. That's all that is. And I have a guest today. Introduce yourself. Uh, peace and blessings, family. My name is Taye Uhuru. I'm an author, historian, genealogist, and I'm a musician. Genealogist. Okay. What is that? <laughs> what is that? You said what is a genealogist? Yeah. This is your gene. I, don't know why I, can't, I can't hear you so much. Um, okay, genealogy is basically like the study of um, people trying to research their family's history. So I help people retrace their roots, primarily oh. black Americans, but I work with people from Jamaica, Mexico, some Europeans, you know what I'm saying? So people want to go into the 1800s, the 1900s, the 1700s. I help them find a lot of archives, um, things like census records, birth certificates, death certificates marriage licenses, old newspaper articles, archive photos, and so forth. Oh, Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. You got magic powers? Because <laughs> how you find all that stuff? It got to be a secret to it. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of research. Exactly. How long did it take to do one person? This is not coming up. Yeah, on I was going to say it's not. Well, I mean, it's usually a lifelong process, but, you know, within a month, you know, I can pretty much find a lot of the um, different articles and stuff like that. So people may come back to me with more information and say, okay, I'll talk to my aunt or my great aunt, and she said this, can you look this up for me? Then I'll go back and look stuff up for them. And then when you go back into these cities and places, they have town halls and city halls and a lot of things like that where some of the... um, information is not online so you can actually go to these places yourself and request things like i had to go to a, i had to go to south carolina and i had to get a um, actual marriage license because it wasn't available online. Mm. Interesting. interesting okay make sure you share this um so oh. your people can see it also um okay, okay what made you get into that let's start there what made me get into genealogy yes um I mean, just want to know more about my family, researching my roots. Um, I've always admired black people and black history and African history. So, you know, I do have a cousin. He was doing um, the ancestry before me. He was doing it like in the 80s and 90s. So when he was doing it, you know, the computers and the Internet and stuff wasn't around. So it was a little bit harder for him. So I kind of picked up where he left off because he researched that side of the family but the way it works is like this you have two parents four grandparents eight great grandparents 16 32 64 128 so you know by us having different fathers and different mothers you know what i'm saying a lot of our family tree was different so it's just something that i just took advantage of by me having access to the internet and different things like that being from a younger generation where are you located interesting i'm from cleveland ohio from Cleveland, Ohio. Was you born here? In Cleveland? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. Now let's get into um the music side of it. Um, I listen to what inspires your music. Let's start there. Man, inspiration can come from a lot of 
places, from movies, from books, from people, from life experiences. Uh, the last video that I released was Do Revolutionaries Go to Heaven? And that's a song that I wrote and recorded and I shot the music video while I was living in South Africa. And this was in 2020. This was during the pandemic. So I was influenced by the neighborhood that I was living in. Um, it's called Mabo Nang. And it's a very unique unique place a lot of rappers producers singers fashion designers drummers poets singers you know different type of artistic people they come into this neighborhood to showcase their talent so during the lockdown you know they weren't able to really perform but a lot of them lived in my building so I was fortunate so I was still able to write and record I knew a photographer that lived in the building and he shot the uh, music video for me so it's a lot of art in the area so every day when I would walk to the grocery store, I would walk past paintings of great black people like uh, Marcus Garvey, Nelson Mandela, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman. And, you know, that actually uplifted my spirits and motivated me. And I wanted to make a song, you know, dedicated to the people that fight for black people, the, the people that actually get up and do something. You know, the people that risk their lives, they risk their freedom, they risk their families, they risk their money. You know, they risk everything so that we can all have a better life in this world. Are you out there risking your life? I'm just asking. I, I mean, I'll, I will let the people answer that. You know what I'm saying? When <laughs> done with this, Are you out there fighting? Fight. Are you out there being a revolutionary since you're rapping about it? Well, I'm just asking. I, I think it depends on what your definition of what a revolutionary is. You, mm -hmm. Rosa Parks sat in her seat. She didn't give her seat up for a white person. I think that was very revolutionary. You know, sometimes we may just think of a, a gun or a warfare mm -hmm. or something like that. You could open up a black-owned business. That's revolutionary. You open up a black-owned grocery store. That's revolutionary. You don't want to. You want to wear your hair natural. That's that's revolutionary to me. Oh, okay. So by you being a revolutionary, it's the music. <laughs> mostly right yeah yeah oh yeah i mean yeah, <laughs> I, think so. I think i think so but i'll let the you know that's one of them things the people got to give you that title you know what i'm saying so i don't want to be like yeah i'm a revolutionary i'll let the people decide you know if, if they watch the interview and they could tell me if they think i'm revolutionary or not okay and listen to my music too for sure where can we listen to it what platform? Okay, I got music on uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Camp Cleveland. That's my handle. Um, I got a website, campcleveland.org. Oh, that's it. Uh, okay, so um, with the music situation, how long have you been doing that? Um, I've been writing music since I was a kid. I started in like elementary school. You know, it was something that we did for fun to make people laugh. Um, but as I got older, you know, I started writing songs with more lyrical content, songs that had meaning, you know, things like that, trying to convey a message. So are you a rapper? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I your name. I thought you was African. Are you African? <laughs> well, I feel like I'm African, you know what oh. I'm saying? But I'm African-American. So, you know, my ancestors picked cotton and they was brought here during the slave trade. But yeah, I was born and raised in Cleveland. But the name that I go by, my, my legal name, I changed my name. It oh. is an African name. You it changed African your name. name. Oh. Say that again. You, you changed your name to an African name. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, because I really thought you was African. <laughs> right. We, I mean, we, we, you look... <laughs> We can look at each other. We don't know. You can't tell somebody from Brazil or Africa or the Caribbean. You know, sometimes you can maybe if they dress a certain way or you hear their accent. But, no, but you know, no, we are brothers real, and sisters. Because of, your, cause of your name, you know. And I, I really yeah. thought you was a, a real, like an African artist. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's I mean, my man. <laughs> that's, a, that's just a part of doing the research. When I did my research, I found where we got our last name from, you know, and it okay. came from a slave plantation. So, like most black Americans, yeah, well, most my last name comes from a European, you know, that owned my family. So... So you changed your name to your ancestor's yeah. name? No, of what this you found? name, say that again? Because of what you found or no? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going into. So basically, okay, 
I'll tell you what my name was. My mother named me Marcus Greenwood. Greenwood is a white person that owned my family, that raped and killed and sold and beat my family. So that's not a name that I want to pass to my wife. That's not a name I want to pass to my children. So 200 years from now, we'll continue to call each other Greenwood and Greenwood. So I decided to take a name for myself that's not only African, but actually has a meaning. It has substance. It has relevance to me as an African man or African American man. Gotcha. Oh, okay. I know my last name is from uh, a slave owner that owned my Most of ours family. are. <laughs> but it's like, it's, yeah. it's cre- not creepy, but it's like annoying because like, why would you want to keep that name? I see what he's saying. Don't nobody want that. Anyway. So you'll change yours? I ain't got no money. <laughs> I, I, even if it wasn't a slave name, I want to change my name anyway. <laughs> I'm already kicked out of this thing that I have. So. You know, I, wanna, I might just change it any damn way. I probably I won't even. Well, just shit, go I not had my name. kids. They got their last names, and is that and they last names right, are not mine. Right. So to each his own, though. You know, I ain't. Yeah, I've been you know, thinking about changing my name anyway. Really? To toxic? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have you know, I, I don't you know what it. last I had name to do that. I want, but I probably go African route too because. Yeah. But you have okay. <laughs> I'm about to make fun of your name. color. <laughs> well, don't and you your see, green eyes. <laughs> don't you see this? If you turn these bright ass lights down, I'm just you would saying see that like, I am a dark. I'm complexion. just saying. It's just these lights with the light it. skin and the First green of all, eyes. And then all it you takes walk is around some with contacts. <laughs> Kill that right there because I can't see any fuck away, so it don't even matter the color of these eyes. You know. Okay, so <laughs> let's get into the nitty gritty. Since you're a uh, rapper. I seen um, a video of yours. I did a little research. Um, the Black of the Berry, which is a a, a song about mm. black women. Definitely. Sweeter the juice. Yes. Okay. Explain why you did that song, and then we can get into that especially. Oh, okay. I mean, it's definitely a song for black women all around the world to let them know that they are beautiful. They are respected. They are loved. They are needed. They are the best, you know. Okay. So do you have a girlfriend? I'm single right now. Did you have a girlfriend? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Why you single then? (laughs) Exactly. It's always the reason why people single. (laughs) Right, right. I mean, because wait, go... how old are you? I'm 36. So it's a reason why you single. Please let me know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I ain't gonna get too specific. Really I guess 26. maybe a lot of times by me traveling. So you know, I take responsibility for that. You know, I just need to, you know, find a destination and sit mm-hmm. still for a little while. So you too busy for a relationship, and a woman just can't deal with that right now. No, that's it depends that's on cold for it cheating. depends on the person. I would say <laughs> some people some people can't handle it, and some people is is for it. Like it's it's a lot of women that's mm-hmm. that's traveling all around the mm-hmm. world. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that may be what I need. You know, a, a world did she, I've been did in seventy wa- country. Who? Uh, uh, wait, hold on. He said she beat me to it. He's he's the sweet the juice. I sound like, yes. Oh, because I said. Okay, so basically, <laughs> they say that's code for cheating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not yeah. necessarily cheating. Is uh, uh-huh. no, nah, that ain't the case. Oh, okay. I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, but but that's what I was saying. Like, if if I'm with someone that that loves to travel or willing to travel or their situation permits them to be able to travel. You know what I'm saying? It might make for a smoother situation. No, it ain't necessarily me cheating on somebody. It's just people have needs and expectations. You know what I'm saying? That's why you should stay single, though. Yeah, it's your best bet to stay single as you travel into Because let's say you was in a relationship. When you was in a relationship, did you even ask for her to travel with you? Well, the person that I was in a relationship with, 
they were limited to their ability to right. be able to travel. So I would say this by me having an American passport, I can go more places than this person may be able to go. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if I was dating an African American woman, then we would probably be able to go to the same places. We would have the same chances. You know what I'm saying? But if you date, date now say if I'm dating a person that's from Africa, you know, they may not be able to go all of the places that I can go. Gotcha. That is so true. Uh, Shaquetta said, man makes time for who he wants, for who and what he wants. That is so true. Uh, right, right. That is instance, true. I mean, but I'm trying to build a, a legacy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's what I'm putting first that's right good. now. But they also say a busy man, a busy man is a millionaire in the making, a hard working man, uh, a non busy man is probably a broke man. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know I'm to that. You know, I, what you think about that? Tell me what your opinion is. Oh, um, it could be either or. You just can't say that both of them 100%. Because just because somebody not a, a busy don't mean that they not focused. I mean, I don't know. Some people feel like, you know, if you're not busy, then you ain't doing nothing. Uh, some people feel like um, if you're too busy, sometimes, but some people use that business busyness as an excuse. Right. That's what I'm saying. You know, half the time they don't be working. Just because you're busy, you could be on bullshit, though. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so it, it yeah, but it's all if you trust, trust the person. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, Do you have trust issues? No, I don't have trust issues at all. I believe what you tell me, but I think it's a struggle. Like we all human, so we struggle with different things. And maybe my struggle may be, a, or the average person may, it may be a struggle between time and money. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, if the person busy or if you're not busy, you broke. Some people got all the time, but they don't have the money. And then some people right. got a lot of money, but they don't have the time. It's a balance. You know so. Yeah. So you got to learn the way to balance your lifestyle you know, with that, you're traveling. Because you travel for work, which is the genealogy thing, right? Well, I do tours. So I take groups, primarily black Americans. I take them to different countries in Africa. And they're educational tours, you know what I'm saying? So we go to places like Egypt, Ghana, Senegal, Cape Verde, South Africa, Ethiopia. Do tours for music? For... No, no, they're like educational tours so say for example if people are interested in ancient african history right. we may go to egypt then we would go to the valley of the kings the valley of the queens Hatshepsut's temple the temple of karnak the temple of luxor we go to abu Simbel, aswan the pyramids of giza the red pyramid the bent pyramid the step pyramid and then you know we focus upon that ancient african history 5,000, 10,000, 3,000 years ago then we got tours of like Senegal and Ghana, where we focus on the transatlantic slave trade. We go to the slave castles, the slave dungeons. We visit the Door of No Return. We learn about the Ashanti tribe, Adinkra printing, you know, the Kente cloth and different things like that. Oh, okay. Okay, with that being said, what type of woman you look you look for? Because like with your background and all your knowledge, I know it has to be some yeah, type yeah. of yeah. Yeah. Some type of woman. Yeah. Just can't be like an average mean, woman. I'm simple, man. As, as long as no, she was so. you simple. I, so. I ain't yeah, finna I believe so. that. No, you ain't finna yeah. deal with you no got too dumb much ass. What's going on in your brain? Right. To say that. No, don't say that. No. <laughs> no, be honest. Tell the truth. Shine the devil. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm, for real. I, I'm not like a materialistic person. I'm not like a shallow person. I mean, she got to be definitely black or mixed with black or have some type of black or, you know, granny, mama black or something, but more so the personality, as long as they respectful, you know. So I won't see you with a white woman. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, unseasoned. Uh, unseasoned. Unseasoned. What? <laughs> What'd you say? I can hear you. What'd you say? Unseasoned. We won't see you with an unseasoned woman. No, because like I said, at this point in my life, it's like about legacy and building something for generations. I'm trying to think long term, you know what I'm saying? So if I have kids and great grandkids and I have a legacy, you know what I'm saying? I want that to be intact. 
the travel you travel to Africa a lot, correct? Definitely. Now, we didn't hear much about Africa having about the coronavirus. Let's go there. Have you been over there since the pandemic? Um, I was living in Africa during the pandemic. I was living in South Africa. Okay. How was that over there? Well, it depends on the country because the thing is this. Africa has more countries than any other continent right. in the world. Africa is the most genetically diverse continent in the world. More cultures, more languages, more animals, more landscapes. They got all of the minerals, diamonds, gold, platinum, oil. Everything is in Africa. So it would have to depend on a specific um, place that you're speaking of. As far as South Africa, South Africa is, is probably the closest thing to America. You know what I'm saying? In terms of the culture and the music, they got MTV and BET and VH1 and different things like that. So it's a little bit more westernized. So they had a lot of cases. They probably had the most cases out of, you know, all of the African countries. But in general, the continent of Africa wasn't as affected by the COVID pandemic as, say, Europe or North America, you know, or other parts of the world. Like India, I believe, was real bad. Really? That is yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy yeah. how like one part of the continent is that is yeah, that's crazy. That I don't understand that. Like I really don't understand that. I think they were saying something about like COVID having an effect on like elderly and older people. So mm-hmm. I think Africa is if not one of the youngest continents. You know, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot more younger people. No, you know okay. what I'm saying. The birth rate is a lot higher. You know, they having a lot of children and different things like that. It's different factors. You know. Yeah, because no, you can catch it, but it you know it was mostly killing the elderly. It killed some younger people. I had a few people that passed from it, but when yeah, you watch the news, you didn't see. You will see like. China and um, Italy and all that, all those places, you know. I think those know. are like high value places, like people travel over there more. But than probably, I never seen Africa over Africa there. Africa, though. A lot of people don't right, go over there. Right, right. Africa get like a negative, yeah, like, it's like a stigma travel, with yeah. Africa. You know, people you go always to Africa expect to them do to be in last do, place. To like learn and do research and stuff. People just don't go over there. Like, oh, let's take a vacation. We're going to Africa. Like they say, oh, let's go to France or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Th- so that do make Truth sense. Truth Star said most people don't travel to Africa. See? Yeah. 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 That's a... <laughs> He's a weird. <laughs> oh. Josh, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Uh, right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Most of the sense. places hit harder when you travel places with tourist spots. Yeah, and then mostly tourist spots are South Africa. Yeah, you're yeah. right. And it spread it spread it through South Africa, which is crazy. And where did you live? You didn't live in South Africa, did you? Yeah, yeah. I was living in South Africa. I was living in Johannesburg. Okay. Okay. All right. Did you like it? Yeah, definitely. It was a great experience. It, Africa is beautiful. What made you move there? And then what made you move back? from there to the back to the United States. Okay. Now when I moved to Africa, I wasn't intending on moving there because I had got to Africa in like January and then I was traveling to different countries in Africa, but I had an apartment in South Africa. So I wasn't planning to stay for the entire year, but around like February or March, they started talking more about COVID. And then when they explained the lockdown you know i wasn't to the understanding that we probably would be locked down for six or seven months oh you so got stuck wanted... yeah yeah pretty much i got stuck i mean they had like emergency flights like you know i still could have left but i just decided to stay because of the neighborhood i was in you know i was living in the art district right by downtown there was a lot of grocery stores and stuff like that so it was a great experience you know outside of the fact that you know what the world was going through and people was getting sick and losing their lives for sure. Mm. Okay. So moving back, how was that transition for you and what made you move back? Man, I, it was another thing. It was another mishap. Cause I think I came back in, uh, let me see in January I was in Egypt and then I went to Dubai 
And I came back to America in February and I had bought my ticket. I was going back to Africa in March, but then I had got COVID. So then I couldn't leave, you know what I'm saying? So I had got postponed. So I'm supposed to go back to Africa Friday. Friday, I'll be going to Cape Verde, Cabo Verde. I was saying, but you called COVID here or over there? In America. I bet you did. <laughs> she said, I bet you did. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying, how was the transition moving back from Africa? And then uh, when once you moved, uh, what made you move back? Well, oh, States. no, I was just coming to visit. I just came for a quick visit. Like okay. I say, I came back in February, and I was going to leave back out in March. Okay, and then okay, the day okay. I took my test, I was I was supposed to fly out like the next day. So I had to rearrange and cancel everything. But, I mean, coming back, it just was like a reverse culture shock. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. It feels good to be surrounded by your own people, being in the majority, not being a minority, right, not right. being looked down upon, you know, in each and every aspect of life. You know, just imagine, not even just South Africa, but imagine going to Africa, period. You you fly to Africa on a, um, a black-owned airline, black pilots, black flight attendants. You get to the airport, black people uh, taking your bags, black taxi drivers. You go to the ATM, black people on the money. You know, you're driving down streets named after black people. The president is black, the fireman is black, the yeah. police is black. So a lot of that racial oppression, a lot of that tension that we've been accustomed to our entire lives, nonstop, every day of our lives, you know, is almost non-existent. So, How often do you travel over there? Because my friend Josh is talking about you're going to be our traveling buddy. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> whenever y'all ready, let me know. I, I go all year round every year. <laughs> um. I had when you said it's nice to um, be around people that don't look down on you. Um, I worked with Africans and they very judgmental um, when it comes to African Americans. Um, are they like that when you go over there versus when well, they come over here? Because when they come over here, they they do down us. They they say we spoiled. They say <laughs> um, we don't appreciate nothing. They. You know, they do. I, I work with them. You know, I had got into a few arguments with them because cause they are like that. They so domineering, and they feel like that we take advantages of things that we should appreciate. So how was that like that when you was over there? Well, this is the thing. See, I, like I said before, Africa has almost 60 different countries. Mm -hmm. So from my experience, like when you meet an African in America, they usually from maybe four to five different countries. Yes, they, they do, Josh. <laughs> or Ghanaian or from Senegal or Ethiopia. You, don't, you How many times have you met an African from Madagascar or South Africa or Zambia or Nambia? or Uganda or Rwanda or it'd be Cape the Verde ones from Nigeria Sanctino. that really don't like us. Right, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So to be more specific, Nigeria is one country out of almost sixty right, countries. Right. So that's like that's like somebody saying, uh, North Americans don't like us. Uh I met some Jamaicans right. and some Mexicans and they treated me horribly. And then you'll be like, I'm from America, man. I just like we don't know nothing about these countries. Like say you go from Wow. From America to Canada to Mexico to Guatemala to Dominican Republic to Haiti, those countries are totally different. The people speak a different language. The people have different laws, different religions, different customs. Sometimes the people even look different. They eat different food. So Africa is probably 10 times more diverse than that. So you may have had a bad experience with an African from Nigeria or Kenya or Ghana, but it's almost 50 different other countries, you know, in Africa. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say all Africans are like that from my experience of actually going to the continent, you know, Africans, they are very welcome and they, they welcome you to, you know, the country. And some, some countries have offered citizenship. They've offered land. They've offered business opportunities. They've publicly welcomed black Americans to return to Africa, but it depends on which country and which, you know, part of Africa. For yeah, because sure. some of them just don't like us at all. And, <laughs> and I don't even know why. You be like, I ain't even do nothing to you. 
They just feel like we just unappreciative. We take advantage. We're spoiled. They feel like we're spoiled. And it's just, what city are you from? Huh? Where I, you at? I'm in Milwaukee. Oh, okay. You in Milwaukee? That's cool. That's cool. I, I've been to Milwaukee a few times. Yeah. But yeah, so that's why I was wondering, is it like that? Because I wouldn't mind traveling over there. Like, I want to go to Dubai. You want to go to Dubai? The water looks tasty. (laughs) 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 Trees are not for the play with you. He said the water looks tasty. Okay, so you've been to Dubai, right? It's like. And that's a high tourist point. We got the little blue in it. Look like that. Say that again. Dubai is a high tourist point, correct? Yeah, but Dubai is like consider more like the middle east so once you start going over there that's like a whole no it's not like african culture so you have mm-hmm. to stick like towards like maybe like if you're looking for beaches africa got some of the most beautiful beaches in the world if you look at seychelles cape verde sao tome um comoros mauritius like if you if you google some of these places you would be amazed so mm. do you speak different languages since you travel to all uh, these places? Just a few, a couple. Like what? Uh, just a, not not any African languages, but uh, English, Span- a little Spanish, a little Portuguese, trying to learn a little bit of French. French. I was about to say, French is like... French is not African. It's the main... It's like... Got, yeah. yeah. A lot of French. French. You got to learn what did, French. What did you say? You got to learn French. Do they speak a lot of English where you were? Wait, I couldn't hear you. Say that again. Did they speak a lot of English where you was in Africa? It depends. Like I say, look, it's it's almost 60 countries, so you got to be specific. But I'm saying, so where I, were I, you? Because you was there for a while, and you go back and forth. How do you communicate? That's what I'm saying. Right. Do they speak a lot of English? Like, yeah, do you yeah. just point to so, shit? Like, I, I'm just, that's what I'm trying to find out. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No, I, I understand what you're saying. So this is the thing. So I, I lived in South Africa, right? Right. But I've been to uh, I've been to about 20 different African countries. So it depends on where you go. So if you're speaking specifically about South Africa, they do speak English. Mm-hmm. And in, in South Africa, they have about 10 official languages. So the average South African speaks three or four or five different languages. So if you went to South Africa and you only could speak English, you would be able to get around just fine. You would have a great experience. And mm. people would be able to communicate with you and they'll be able to understand you. Oh, okay. That's why I want to know because traveling, now they put in restrictions to travel um, overseas. Like you have to mm. be vaccinated to travel overseas. So I won't be seeing Africa. <laughs> yeah, I won't be seeing nothing. <laughs> You know, I should have went before the COVID thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> but so, um, speaking of, have you been vaccinated so you can travel back and forth? Because it is a band on that if you're not vac- vaccinated. Uh, man, I haven't gotten no COVID vaccine, so I would have to look into it. So maybe they have changed it because so much is changing daily. You know, you never know. I don't plan on getting the vaccine. For COVID, you know, I have got vaccines in the past, but I don't think I'm going to get no COVID vaccine. And I'm point. sorry to invade into your privacy, but why do you not want to get the vaccine if you don't mind me asking? Oh, you speaking about the COVID vaccine? Yeah. Well, I feel like, number one, it's a newer vaccine. It's something that's new, so therefore it's experimental. Like exactly. I say, when we look into the long-term effects Am I going to still be able to have children? Are there going to be side effects? Like they have vaccines for things like yellow fever. Yellow fever been around for 200 years. Polio been around 100 years, you know, so people have had time to try these vaccines and you can actually research them and you can see what were, you know, the downsides of each vaccine was where COVID is something that we're all still learning about. So I'll pass. And I already had COVID. Mm-mm. I I I I agree with you on that. My friend just said, "Don't you have to get vaccinated in general, not just for COVID?" So, what vaccines do you have? Yeah, to you got to take some. When I was you looking it up over there, 
Because I a lot of men, I'm going to tell you like this, because I have a lot of friends that's in the Army that travels a lot when they was in the Army, and they used to have to get vaccinated, and a lot of them going bald because of that. So mm. what type of vaccination? Oh, uh, that could be something else. <laughs> <laughs> that could be something else. <laughs> Digress. What so type that. of vaccinations are required for you to travel over there? Like, what kind of yeah. vaccinations did you require? That fever one? That you had to take, right? Well, it depends, it depends on which country you plan on visiting. And it's a website if you want to know yep, the exact... Yeah, I was on okay. there. Right. It's called travel.state.gov. So, for example, yep. if you want to visit Egypt, if you want to visit Cape Verde, if you want to visit Namibia... Oh, everyone has a different... Yeah, every country has a different one, not just and to the continent, two, correct? You got to get two sets of shots. Each, thought, each country thought, is different. I thought, see, that's why I'm fucked up. See, I thought to travel over to the continent, <laughs> you it's only a Pacific... No, sometimes you gotta get but two different sets of shots. countries. Yeah, everybody got their own set of rules. Oh, okay. Yep, I okay. was on there bored one day just looking at shit. Yep, I seen that. But it's it's countries you could visit in Africa that don't require any vaccinations, and that's why you got to go to the United States Department of State and Travel to get the official information because they're gonna tell you if you go to South Africa, you don't need any vaccination to visit South Africa. You know what I'm saying? But if you go to Ghana then they have yellow fever. So you have to get a yellow, you yeah. have to have a yellow fever vaccination to visit Ghana. If you want to go to Egypt, you don't need a vaccination. Oh. You want to go to Cape Verde, you know, so it's, a, it's dozens of countries because Africa is, is more modern and updated than we think. They have malls, they have iPhones, right. they have Benzes and BMWs. People got Bentleys and Gucci and they got everything that we got, but they never show that. Mm, really? Yeah, they only want to show the poor part. Yeah, like but it's the like everywhere. <laughs> the United States, we have poor parts of the world. Like uh, it's everywhere. So it's always gonna be yeah, there, but, you know somewhere. Oh poor. wow, okay. So some places you don't have to get vaccinated. So true style yeah, to answer true. your question. Some you just got. Some you do, yeah, some you don't. Will, but so. I always will do the research on getting putting stuff in my body. As children, we didn't have no other choice. They did it because we had to go to school for it. But now I think mm-hmm. it's optional to vaccinate your kids for school. And yeah, to, now you got you have to. Uh, it's a process you go through with your doctor. Oh uh, yeah, and then but uh, then some doctors still won't do it. It's a lot of people that went like changed their kids' doctors because the doctor was less pro for um vaccination like i had a good doctor i'm so mad he left but he like it's up to you yes or no you got to be careful with no every since this you got to be careful it's one of the richest countries akon is an example for of making it there true yeah. that yeah that's yeah. true uh a lot of people yeah, don't you have to do your research on vaccinations now i'm saying this now because they just throwing shit out there and making trying to make you put it yeah, in your body so it's just like make sure y'all do your research if y'all traveling see if y'all need any vaccinations and do your research behind them because they might sneak that covid one in that motherfucker on your ass so just, just, i don't understand how, right. how could they, <laughs> you know they trying to get you to just how could they take make it. A, a vaccine a vaccine so fast though i don't understand that you it know, doesn't make sense i don't know well they gonna have to why tie, would you they gonna have to tie me that. down to eject that joke in mind do you know how tired them scientists and shit was in them labs that's, that's not right <laughs> that's okay. not right so, uh, with that being said, um, do you when you're over there, you do a, the educational um, thing. How many people do y'all go in groups, or how many people do you take? Yeah, definitely. I've taken middle school students, high school students, college students, young adults, elders. They're usually small groups, you know. So, so is it a scholarship one. or something that pays for this? Say that again. Is it a scholarship or something that pays for this? How does the kids and the people that goes to these educational programs overseas pay for this? 
Um, no, nah, unfortunately, I don't have no type of scholarship or nothing like that. That's something that I would like to work on in the future. Um, I mean, for the most part, people just paying cash or they can do a payment plan. It's not expensive. I charge basically twenty eight hundred dollars and that include a round trip flight, breakfast, hotel, um, all of the activities. So if we ride the camels, if we ride on the Nile River, if we go to the Cairo Museum, if we go to the pyramids, all of those activities would be included. And it includes flight insurance, travel insurance, and things like that. That ain't and how bad. long is the stay? Like two weeks, a month, two months? Well, it's it's different packages, but that's the, the first package. So if you want to stay a week, you can stay a week. If you want to stay two weeks, oh, three okay. weeks, if you want to visit more than one country, it's very flexible. You could go any time of the year. So your lowest package is $2,800. Mm-hmm. And that includes the round trip to South Africa or does it matter what country y'all go to? No, no. All of the countries is the same price. So when I say round trip, it's from a destination city. So depending on which country you pick, so say like if you want to go to Egypt, when we go to Egypt, we usually fly out of New York. If we if we go into Cape Verde, we usually fly out of Boston because that's where, you know, they're concentrated at. So we'll have to go by what the airline says. But whichever one you pick, it would be the same price. And that again, that includes round trip, hotel, breakfast, and the events that you have planned, yeah. correct? Yes. Now, is the whole trip, do the whole trip have to be educational? Because sometimes well, people might want to venture off. Right, right. No, no. It's always time for that because... It depends on the group. Like I say, sometimes I might have kids. Sometimes I may have young adults or elders. So it's flexible. You know, we go out. We have fun. We go to the mall. And, and sometimes people want to break off from the group. And if they tell me what they want to do, then I can assist them and set it up for them so they can do it safely. And then, you know, they can make their way back. Oh, okay. That's not bad at all. And how did you start doing this? Um, I've been doing it probably about the last three or four years. Uh, people was just asking me so many questions about Africa, but they, like I say, they always look at it as one place. So that's why I had a different tours and I try to narrow down what are their interests, what are they interested in? Cause some people want to see those pyramids and the old architecture. And some people want to see the newer stuff, the modern cities. And some people want to see the beaches and the animals. So, you know, people want to see different things. So I just try to kind of cater to, you know, what their interests are. Oh, okay. That that's that sounds legit. Mm, that's a good thing you're doing. Yeah, that's like very you, you. that's very good what you're doing there. Uh, is that that also on your website too? How people can link up with you to get involved or to take these trips with you or how does that work? How do people link if they wanted to schedule a trip with you? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so my website is campcleveland.org. So if you want information about the tours, information about the genealogy research, information about my music, the book, anything that I do, you can find it on my website or you can follow me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube as Camp Cleveland, C A M P Cleveland. All right, Mr. Cleveland. I think we touched it all the um bases here. Um again, I'm gonna need you to give me one more time slowly <laughs> <laughs> your information, your sites and everything on the tours, the videos and everything, the ge- genealogy, all that. Everything on the same sites, correct? Yes. Okay. So slowly give it to them and then we go from there. Okay, okay. It's uh <laughs> campcleveland.org. C A M P C L E V E L A N D dot O R G. And my Facebook handle, um, my Instagram handle, my YouTube handle is Camp Cleveland. All uh, right. All right. Um, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you coming through. Um, again, I enjoy the music. I also enjoy the fact that I you, check it out. yeah, these, um, these tours you do are very educational, um, and not very expensive. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah, that's cheap. yeah you're doing a good job out here, sir. 
Oh, yeah. Likewise, <laughs> I truly appreciate you too, Queens. I love what y'all are doing and keep up the great work. Thank you again for having me on your show. I truly appreciate it. No that. problem. You can come back anytime. Uh, again, y'all, um, follow him, hit him up, um, and, you know, look for the African tours, the videos. He got some good music. Um, next week we will be talking to a movie producer for the sci-fi movie that I posted on my page. Oh, okay. So um, they'll be coming in uh, next week, Tuesday. Um, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Talk is Cheap with Kiana J. If nobody told y'all today, I'm going to tell y'all I love you. Bye.